All right, so the purpose of this video is to show you all how to use external VST plugins in VoiceMeter. Now, as you know or may not know, VoiceMeter doesn't actually support this by default. You can't actually load up your VSTs uh, in VoiceMeter. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a program called Contabile. Here you can basically control your VoiceMeter potato inserts and you can slap some VSTs in between. So we're going to talk about how to set that up. So just a quick minute for the very beginner. If you don't know what an insert is, it's basically, if you think of a traditional mixer, you're able to get these external effects processors and put them in between the signal flow of a channel. So you're inserting effects into your channel. Or maybe another example you might be familiar with if you're used to inserts in a, in a digital audio workstation in a DAW. Let's say you use, for example, FL Studio. Your inserts would be uh, over here. That's an insert. You're putting effects into a channel. Or if you're using something like Cubase, your inserts would be would be up here. These would be your inserts. You're putting effects into a channel. And that's exactly what we are going to do with voice meter potato. All right, let's get started. We're going to blaze right through the initial setup. Let's get to it. Okay, so first thing, audio engine. All right, audio driver needs to be set to your Osseo uh, voice meter potato insert virtual Osseo. Okay, what does that mean? What is an insert? An insert is something that basically splits the channel and uh, is inserted between the channel pre or post fader uh, pre fader by default so let's check take a look here let's move this over all right let's go to the menu and let's go to the system settings all right you'll notice here in the bottom i've got these lit up by default you're going to have them off uh, what does that mean so this is your left and right channel in um, your one two three four and five channel all right here okay so you have a left and a right uh, these are the inserts, and what this does is say, okay, let me use inserts, enable the inserts. Uh, what does the insert do? Okay, like I said, it splits that channel. Before we go any further, let's talk about this little icon here, because understanding this icon really helps paint the picture for what's actually going on uh, with the audio. All right, so as you notice here, it's either on or off. Uh, when it's off, you see the line is, is straight, and when it's on, it's broken. What does that, what does that actually mean? All right, let's, let's redraw that here on paint. Okay. So uh, we're going to take a little square, take another little square, let's color it. And then we got the line going through. It's an ugly line. Let's get it fatter. Okay, that's our line. All right. That means that the channel is not, the signal is not split. It's not leaving and coming back. All right. Keyword leaving and coming back. When you click it, it looks like this. All right. What they don't show you is little arrows like this. All right. All right. So this right here, this is your voice meter potato. This is also your voice meter potato. The signal goes out and then the signal comes back in. All right. Another thing they don't show you is what's over here. This is your good friend, Contabile. Uh, cat dyslexia. Take two. Canta, which means sing in Italian. Maybe that has something to do with uh, software. Who knows? All right. So what I'm doing is as soon as I enable this and they say split the channel, I'm manipulating the sound using external plugins, third party plugins before then sending it back to voice meter. All right. So here's an example. Let's take the summed mic channel right now. Okay. All right, so let's look at the summed mics for an example. Let's not get too caught up with these two here, but let's just go in the straight line here. So this one, think of it as a cable. So it's in this channel. It comes out of the channel before it reaches the fader. It comes out. It comes through here. Input of this denoiser. What is the denoiser? It's a little freeware plugin that I got that denoises my sound. So here, you can have a listen. Here's the noise. Here's without noise. So link in the description, this is a good plugin to use. And let's get back. So that's what's happening. I'm getting input from the summed mics channel, which is this one. It's going to denoiser. It's going out of denoiser into another effect here. This is my multiband compressor. This is basically a, a compressor that's split into different frequency bands. So it's like four compressors. Anyway, then it comes out and finally goes back to the summed mics. That's this channel here. All right, so that's basically the signal flow and how to interpret everything when you're uh, looking at my setup. 
So how do you set this up if you're trying to, if you're looking to do this on your own? And we're going to speed right through this. I'm going to go over how to actually connect your inserts to this. This is after setting up the audio engine. So remember, the audio engine needs to be set to uh, Potato Insert Virtual Asia. Okay. Uh, once that's set, then you got to the audio ports. Uh, you have inputs and outputs. What we're doing now is we're going to create these gray squares here. Okay. We're going to assign these. I've already done it, but I'm going to go through what I did. You would add a stereo input. Once you add that, you add a stereo output. And that's what these are here. All of these inputs and outputs you create will have to match with your channels on voice meter potato if you're trying to replicate what I'm doing. And if you're using potato and you want to use uh, Contabile, then you definitely want to set it up this way. So what do we got here? You're going to open up your system settings. You're going to enable all these and you're going to create an input and an output per channel. Okay. And you can name it the same thing you name it here. That's what I did. I've got desktop audio, discords, and tickets, PC, some mics and VLC media. As you see my inputs, desktop, discord, PC, some mics, VLC, and then it repeats for the outputs. See, okay. And these are just names that I gave it. So you could give it any name you want. I added the one, two, three, whatever. That way it takes sequential order. Uh, because you can't reorder these in this ports view. So I give it a 1.2 point, 3 point uh, in front of the name just to keep it in order. All right, once you create these inputs, remember, we're only creating this first part here. This left and the right needs to get created afterwards. As you see here, if I add a new stereo input, I'm going to name it whatever. Done. It, it gets put in alphabetical order right here. There's an unassigned left and a right. So then to assign that, let me delete this. Okay. So for example, my sum mics, that's, uh, in, that's insert four. That's going to be these two inserts right here. You're going to add in four left, in four right. That's the same thing you see here, right? In four left, in four right. To add that, you would double click the unassigned one, change your channel here, make sure it says in four left. Hit OK. And then you do the same thing here uh, for the right. Once you complete that for input, then you've basically given it one of these. You do it again for output, you're basically creating one of these. Now, that doesn't actually complete the loop, that won't actually complete the whole uh, connection. Um, what completes the connection is this line here. So it doesn't really work well when it's straight. All right, this is how it is by default. You have to take this, click and drag it over here. Click and drag it, boom, then you complete the connection. When you complete the connection, you're basically saying, okay, I'm allowing audio to go through. I'll give you an example of this on the VLC media. Um, even though we got a bunch of stuff going on here, I'll just show you later on. Okay, give an example. Here's the VLC media. There's some processing going on here, but this is the overall loop here. Let's turn, Let's kill it. I'm going to play a song and you see that we get no audio, right? There's stuff going on here though. You see the music here. You also see my voice compressing and I'll go over how to do this compression later, but you see, we do get an audio signal from the music, but we're not going back out. We need to go out back here. Now we're getting audio and you see that my voice is actually ducking the audio. We're going to talk about how I do that here in a bit. Let's just stop the music. So back to this. Now that we have an understanding of setting up the inserts, make sure you connect everything to uh, Contabula and it's working. As you can see, we were able to get audio to go through. So the first thing I do is I see what I have here on desktop audio from, from uh, in to out. I do that with all of them. You add the effects in later. I wanted to add an effect here. I can just say insert plugin. I'll uh, choose my plugin. So let's say I pick this compressor. All right. It's just a little floating compressor right now. This, this, is doing nothing. Let me full screen this. This is just floating, doing absolutely nothing. Nothing's connected to it. It's just a plugin doing nothing. So if we have no connection here, I can remove that. I put a plug in here. I connect it to the input and take the output and connect it back. So basically what I'm saying now is instead of having a straight line going through and going right back out without processing the audio using a, a VST plugin, now I've said, boom, okay, give me this compressor. I want you to then go to the input compress and then go back out and send it right back out to the desktop audio. What I'm essentially doing is I'm placing an insert here. So if you've used DAWs like, I don't know, Cubase, FL Studio, Pro Tools, uh, all that fun stuff, you've got inserts on channels. This is exactly what this is. This is just a manual way of doing it because voice meter doesn't provide an actual place to put VS VSTs. It doesn't have like a built-in VST engine support or whatever you want to call it. So you use something like this to be able to do that. Good thing is voice meter potato does allow you to have inserts to send the audio out and bring it back in, in between the channel. And that's all you need. And it gives you so much control. That's why it's good. It's a great, great product. All right. So ignore the cables up here. Let's just focus on the sum mics and VLC media. As I've showed you before, when music plays and I talk, it ducks the audio. So how do you do that? Using this compressor here, again, link in the description, um, you can set it up here. 
uh, the detector. The detector is basically the trigger for the compressor. The detector needs to be set to auxiliary input. A window will pop up and says, hey, there's more inputs than you have um, assigned, or it says something like that. You just say, okay, whatever. Right click this, <clears throat> go to audio ports. This is a similar concept as the things we were setting up earlier, but earlier we were setting up inserts. Now we're actually setting the audio inputs and outputs for the plugin itself. Same concept. You want to add, you want to add a uh, stereo input. You only need an input here. You don't need to add another output. What we're doing is we're basically adding this auxiliary, which doesn't exist. You would add it, stereo in, uh, name it. I named it aux. You go in here and you choose auxiliary left. Okay. Choose auxiliary right. Okay. So we're basically um, creating this input. That allows us then to send something, send our mics. We can send the mic right into that auxiliary. All right, what does that mean? That means that now when I choose a detector and I set the detector to auxiliary left and right, the detector becomes my microphone. As you can see when I talk, it's coming down. All right, uh, you won't see it come down by default. Basically what you want to do is you want to set a ratio and you want to set the threshold. So you bring the threshold down and you set a ratio. So the first thing I would do is give it an over-exaggerated ratio. I set it to 10, 10 to 1. That's the ratio. Uh, and then you just drag this down uh, until you start seeing some, uh, some of that red, the red bars. It's a little too much right now. If you do this, you're basically muting the music. So I don't want to mute the music when I'm talking. I just want to bring the volume down. So I found that like, uh, I think it's around like 41, 40. That was good for my microphone settings it'll differ so that's why it's good to just go by ear and also use these these visuals these monitoring tools that they give you with that being said um this compressor is doing absolutely nothing right now it just receives my input and that's it it doesn't do anything so what we do is we take the vlc media and we send that to the stereo input the input is the main sound source for this compressor so the the compressor will manipulate the sound that it's receiving through its input in this case the vlc media so the song that we were playing What's actually going on is VLC is sending its stuff here. And then this halfway through is sending it here, getting processed, spitting it back out and returning here. And then I can, I can use the fader to, uh, to control that. Let's see what, what's going on here. Auxiliary. That is the detector. Uh, this is the input, which means when I play a song, you'll see this meter go up and you'll also see that when I talk, the volume is going to drop. Let me show you that. All right, so when I talk, the volume drops. And then if we over-exaggerate it, you see? So you notice that the music returns after I stop talking. It kind of fades back in. You could change the rate of the fade-in using the release. The release is how fast this plugin releases that detect that input, that input that's that's uh, that it's detecting, that it's, that's manipulating the sound. So if I add a really long release in milliseconds, the fade is much slower. If I have it really low, it's almost instantaneous. And when things are instantaneous in the audio world, sometimes you hear little clicks and pops, and it could be a little annoying, especially if I stop and pause a lot in talking. So I'm not really giving myself a chance to breathe. So by giving it a little bit of release, you're giving me time to pause. So I can pause in between my sentences, and I don't have to worry about that music booming and popping right back in. So something around like 100, 100 is a pretty healthy choice. 100 to 200 is a pretty healthy choice uh, for the sort of broadcast purpose that I'm, I'm using. And again, I don't want to kill it all the way. I want, I want to keep some uh, music. So let's do 44 right now. And that's it. That's how you duck your audio using uh, Cantabile. It's as simple as that. And you can add all sorts of effects. I can add another effect after this. You know, I can add an equalizer. So if I can, I can go here, insert plugin. Do I have EQ right here? EQ. So let's delete that. By default, it likes to do that. Uh, we're going to uh, send this here. And we're going to take this one and put it here. So we've added another plugin in the chain. This is an equalizer. So it's already set up. It's that easy. If we play our, our music now. You've got your uh, compression and you've got the equalizer happening at the same time. 
All right, so that's it for this tutorial. I hope it was informative and I hope that you learned something from it. Feel free to contact me through any way you can reach out to me. If you like these kind of videos, please subscribe, like the playlist, like the video, and uh, yeah, more to come.